Well, welcome uh, and thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here today. Uh, my name is Dr. Dahi McMahon and I'm a senior lecturer in media production at um, in the School of Arts at the University of Derby. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking to you about uh, a project called Our Story, A History in the Irish uh, in Derby. Um, and this paper is entitled Our Story on Screen, Understanding Immigration Through the Experiences uh, of Others. Um, so I'll give you a bit of background and context to the origin of this project. Um, it is an oral history recording of the personal experiences of the Irish diaspora who moved from Ireland to uh, Derby, primarily in the 1950s and 60s when there was a large um, influx of, of migration. Um, these are, again, oral history project, the personal experiences uh, of the uh, individuals who made that journey and leaving home, uh, the travel across, uh, what life was like when they got here, how did they get established and set up, and the experiences they, they had throughout. Um, and really the project was not only to capture those experiences, which we found were very uh, extremely valuable, but also to raise awareness of the contributions that many immigrant communities uh, make to well, not just Derby, but the general the United Kingdom and, and all over the world and the positive impact they can have uh, socially, culturally, economically. Um, and at a time of Brexit where, you know, there's a lot of change and, and, and ebb and flow of the political, geopolitical landscape, it was uh, intended to promote that diverse and pluralist UK society, which does exist here, uh, not just for the Irish, but again, for other uh, cultures as well. Um, it was supported by the Government of Ireland Emigrant Sports Screen uh, Scheme uh, program, I should say. And uh, like I said, uh, as you can see there in the image, uh, uh, the image of St. Patrick's Day in um, the Irish Centre in Derby, and that's really where uh, I met people, and, and that's where the, the whole project took off from. Um, so uh, the, the methodology of this process was that um, it definitely wanted to, I would have a pedagogic focus. Um, it was practice-led research, so we wanted to capture it on film, capture the faces, as well as their, their as I said, oral history projects, so their voices as well. Uh, but yeah, to involve the students within this, so that would have a pedagogic focus and applied learning for the students. And there's uh, some images of the students uh, at work there, not necessarily on this project, but in others. Um, uh, I've been able to use the university facilities and equipment gave this an opportunity for the university to engage uh, externally with uh, uh, the wider community, which you know I do feel, and our university also feels that same way, that it, it has that duty to, um, to serve the community and support it where possible. Um, staff expertise is obviously involved through myself and others, um, and really the focus was one-to-one -one interviews with uh, members of the Irish diaspora here in Derby, and particularly those um, in the elderly, elderly cohort as they become older, um, sadly, their, their memories can fade and, and they can be, they're shrinking in numbers and, and uh, we really wanted to make sure we could capture these um, as soon as we could. And this all happened pre-COVID, um, but it's kind of put together more recently uh, in the lead up to REF um, to, um, as a case study, which I'll get to now in a moment. But I still, I first wanted to play for you uh, a trailer and a piece of it for a few minutes that we put together to give you a, a flavor of this story here. So let me do that. A song called The Isle of Inish Free. It is about immigration, regrets, and dreams, and what have you. I've met some folks who say that I'm a dreamer. My name is Monica Dwyer, and I'm from County Roscommon. My name is Patrick Francis Dwyer, and I come from um, a little village called the Swan in County Leash. Evan Murray. From the Scotland Island. Sheila Galvin from uh, Corpac County Cork, Blarney County Cork. My name is Peter O'Sullivan and I'm originally from uh, West Cork, a place called Kilimatra. I'm Mary Judson and from North Kilkenny, Balleragut Parish. Um, my name is Breda Brady. I was Cullinan originally. I come from County Monaghan. I'm Sarah Ann Coleman. I come from Knock in County Mayo, Ireland. My name is Paddy Condon from Killeen Duff, Eastkey, County Sligo. I was always in trouble. I was getting up some, some awful ideas from my mother. I was getting <laughs> We did have a poultry farm. That kind of made us stand out a little bit from the neighbours because we smelt different. In Ireland we had a little farm and um, a shop, a grocery shop. 
So I had a stepfather and he used to go out in the van to all the houses and deliver the groceries and all that. My father was a farmer and um, we, we were expected to help out on the land as well. I worked in the farm. Uh, my mother died when I was 12. I was the third oldest of four. Back in the 90s, and in the early 90s and late 80s, there wasn't much employment in Ireland and there was a focus in the schooling, in the schools back then to um, go where the jobs were. I first came to the UK in 1954. About, I wasn't quite 15 when I left. August 1955. Glad I was out of a country place and, that, and Derby was a, a town. I liked Derby from the minute I came because I did find the people very, very friendly and very helpful. I played a lot of Gaelic football before I left Ireland and I got in with these lads and they had their own team and I joined with them. They were called Round Towers. England has been good for me and my family and I'm glad, you know, I came to England when I did. And soon I'm back to stern reality. Although they pay the footpaths here with gold dust, I still would choose my I love in its free. Okay, very good. So, um, as you can see there, the um, and that's a uh, three-minute excerpt from the full film, which is 26 minutes long, which you can find on the University of Derby website or on YouTube if you through that link there, or if you search our story, Uni of Derby, you'll get to um, other website or, or, or YouTube. So, I, I encourage you to watch the the the, the full 26-minute film. You'll get much more uh, a broader uh, flavor uh, of their stories and their experiences. Um, and there's a survey through the website there that perhaps you uh, may be compelled to, to fill in for me that I can ga gather further impact because this is a lot of, I suppose, what this, this conference is about and discussing how we can gain impact through our work. Um, so we'd be delighted to see you uh, if, if you decide to do that. Um, so as you see with the contributors, you can see there um, from a uh, similar, uh, obviously, age demographic that came from uh, roughly around the same time in the 50s and, and, and 60s. Um, and they are from... Rural Ireland, predominantly, you can see on the map here where they're from, that kind of crude blotch of blue around Dublin uh, city is, uh, you know, none of them came from there. There's very little, there was opportunity in Dublin, that's where most Dubliners usually stay. But yes, it was rural farming communities where people came from, came looking for opportunity because there was depressed economy and lack of industry back home. Whereas in the UK experience, they found they could make significant contributions. And this is what we find with immigrant com um uh, communities and you know develop an acceptance of of foreigners uh, that's what we want to call them um, is looking at how they contribute in so many different ways we don't necessarily see it um, but in, in terms of post war second world war in Ireland there was an economic boom or in Ireland post war uh, economic boom in the UK and Irish people uh, fill those jobs a lot of women tend to found work in textiles and services and and healthcare and men would be uh, typically in construction and other laboring roles uh, within uh, with, within this growing economy and uh, building tunnels and infrastructure uh, and gas pipelines, etc. And so a lot of people, even after leaving, want to main their, maintain their Irish identity and keep those connections with home. Um, and we can see that they've they've come here and they've a lot of, they're all still still here and they still live in Derby and they continue to. Um, so some of the recurring themes, as I said, large rural areas, lack of opportunity. Coming, looking for labor and services, healthcare, education. They're very welcomed over here, the existing Derby community, and they made positive contributions um, and made con connection, maintained the connection with home and their Irish identity. Um, but I really want to talk about, uh, get into is about the audience response, because talking about REF and, and, and the call for papers for this particular conference, we're looking at how we measure that impact. So we used this video, we edited it together, the 26 minute film, and put it up uh, just before Christmas. We're in a bit of pressure before the, the ref deadline, but we did get 102 respondents to date, uh, and, it, and that's still going, and maybe we can contribute to more of it after today. Um, 
and what it really, some of the key themes that brought up was an awareness of the Irish community in Derby. Some people didn't know that there was an Irish community here at all and that it was so kind of significant. Um, and people understood better the reasons behind immigration. And these are obviously in Irish context, but they don't change. Um, you know, similarly in other countries, people leave looking for opportunities. Some are different scenarios where they need to leave because of refugee, uh, take refugee status because the situation at home is, is, is so um, awful. And so... We see that um, other uh, people, uh, respondents, found that the, interesting how that people create a sense of community and identity were formed when they came to Ireland and they met other people, and that the importance of that community support was quite strong. And so it also made people reflect on their own heritage and cultural uh, identity, uh, which they may not have thought of. So. Uh, quotes such as many spoke of the importance of having Irish communities around them that provide a sense of belonging and community. Um, what they learned from the film, how senses of community and identity were formed and shaped and the role ho of the host nation hospitality in these processes. For me, it was how these people embrace their new country whilst maintaining strong Irishness in accent, outlook and traditions. Um, someone, else said, someone else said, I wasn't aware that there was an Irish community uh, in Derby and has made me more aware. And the life that flourished abroad is not like they would have enjoyed similar richness had they stayed in Ireland. And that's true. They didn't have that opportunity. Uh, and myself, as an immigrant, I moved to the United Kingdom five years ago. The opportunity to work in academia wasn't there for me, and so that's why I've had to come abroad. My grandfather did similarly and um, ended up in Canada. And my father worked for a while in uh, London as well when he was starting out as a psychiatric nurse. So these things repeat themselves um, over time. So those are some of the testimonials. Um, also, I the um, Department of Foreign Affairs supported this project, and the reason they uh, were behind it was that the development of the these projects, such as this, as as our story, um, they develop new ways to communicate and connect with increasingly diverse global Irish, including non-traditional diasporas and young immigrants. Um, these projects also encourage intergenerational engagement and ultimately celebrate and maintain and strengthen the links between Ireland and the global Irish, fostering a more vibrant sense of community and Irish identity, and improving awareness and understanding of Irish immigrant and diaspora experience, which can help promote better awareness of Irish life and culture to inspire and engage the next generation of the diaspora for years to come. And I think that's an important thing to think about how these films can uh, inspire, but also inform younger generations, because as we see, you know, we, we need to inform the young people and be more accepting and more um, tolerant of other other cultures. And, and that's really the impact we wanted to make with this work. So other public dissemination, we want to get this as wide as possible. I'm, I'm working with a, an organization called Shed, where we hope to screen these films publicly, because at the moment it's just online. We'd like to have other public engagement, um, screen it at other national, international um, film festivals, as well as at other conferences, so I can gather wider impact over time. And as I said, I, this was submitted as a case study for REF 2021. So I'd like to thank you for having me here today. And, and um, I think what I hope you've taken away is that the Irish are a large and numerous collection of individuals and micro communities that are scattered across the world, but whom collectively have a shared heritage and identity. Um, the personal testimonies offered in our story reveal a rich collective social, cultural and economic contribution made by the Irish. Um, the Irish immigrants in the 1950s and 60s interviewed for our story were dispersed from Ireland under pressure seeking economic opportunity as there was little on offer in rural Ireland. The chain migration as established uh, in the local community in Derby, including the Derby Irish Association, offered new and lasting relationships and the collective resources so they could put down roots and help maintain connections to their culture, heritage and identity. So by informing the wider public of this through public and online dissemination, the work has improved uh, community relations through respect and understanding and appreciation for the rich and diverse communities in the UK, as it is evidenced in these survey responses that I've read for you. And despite some instances of hostil hostilities, the Irish largely received um, a welcome reception in the UK and gained a number of economic and community benefits from their move. The research therefore challenges some of the findings of work on diasporas and shows how complex and varied the experiences of the Irish diaspora are and were. So I'd like to thank you very much again for having me today and I look forward to the discussion hereafter. Thank you.